Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm comparing the Surface Pro 9 to the M2 iPad Pro. This is the 12.9. As you can see, they're both pretty close in size, just slight differences in the overall footprint here on these devices. I am a longtime iPad user, and I've had different versions of the Surface Pro over the years. This is currently being the ninth version of the Surface Pro, and this is the highest specced out version that you can get in the graphite color, which means it's not the highest specced out version that you can get. It has the i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM with 512 gigs of storage, whereas the iPad Pro M2 is uh, fixed in its specs with the exception of the amount of storage, and this is the one terabyte storage edition. So we're going to look at a couple of different things here. First of all, I'm going to talk about some obvious differences and some of the spec differences on these devices. We'll do a run through of benchmarks and then we'll also do a comparison of photo exports because as a photographer, I utilize my devices for a lot of photo editing and video editing, but devices like this primarily am going to be editing photos and exporting photos that I would share either to social media or that I would be editing for a client. So let's talk about the main differences. Obviously, this is a Windows device. This is an iPad OS device. Windows 11 on this Surface Pro is a much more usable operating system. And I say it that way because the iPad, though there are a lot of apps that are available and a lot of fantastic apps, it's not a full operating system in the sense that Mac OS is or Windows 11. You can only install apps that are available in the App Store. And even though there are a ton of apps and they are great, you still can't install most applications that you would run on your desktop. It's got to be an iPad flavor of that. Whereas over here on the Surface Pro, you have any application that you would run on a Windows device, assuming that it has enough performance for that application. As far as ports go, on this device, you get two USB type C ports, whereas on the iPad, you get one. That means that depending on what you're doing, most of the time you're going to need some sort of a hub on either of these devices. If you're going to utilize either of them in this laptop orientation, a hub is almost necessary because it's annoying to have a bunch of cables cables coming out of the side of your device. On the iPad, you're going to need a USB-C hub that also provides power because everything is going to have to be done through that port. If you have the Magic Keyboard case, which I have here, it has a charging port on it. So you can run a charger into that and then you can run peripherals, SD card readers, whatever out of the USB type C port. On this device, you have the proprietary Surface Connect that you can connect over on the side. You can connect just for power or you can connect it to the Surface Dock, which will give you a lot of expandability as well as power while still leaving your USB-C ports available. What's nice is that one connector out of the Surface Pro will give you power and expandability utilizing that dock. Of course, you can get docks that do the same thing for the iPad. You just utilize your one and only USB type C port for that. As far as comparing specs, it's kind of hard to compare the specs between these two devices because Apple has their own proprietary chip. There is a version of the Surface Pro where you can get the SQ3 processor with it, but I went with the Intel version because I wanted more performance. A device that's going to be running full Windows 11 is going to need a little bit more performance. And while the benchmarks and, and all of the other reviews that I've seen of the SQ3 chip show that it does perform pretty well on that chip, if you want performance for a little bit heavier lifting or running multiple applications, applications at the same time, I would highly recommend going with the i5 or the i7 processor over the SQ3. The SQ3 is designed for a tablet. It's designed for light use as far as the performance goes, the longevity of the battery life that you wouldn't be able to get on the Intel processors. However, the battery life has been pretty good on this device, and I'll talk about that in a comparison as we get through this video. Full Windows 11, iPad OS. iPad OS is becoming more like 
Mac OS, but it's still not Mac OS. Windows 11 is Windows 11, and you either love it or you hate it. And I think Windows 11 is a pretty decent operating system and it works great. Now, another thing that you can do with this device is actually run Android apps on it, which is great because if you want your social media apps and you're on a Windows platform, you can install Android apps utilizing Google Play and the Chrome connection there. You can do that on this device. So one of the main things that I do on all of the devices, as most people do, is run benchmark tests. Of course, the iPad is designed to do one and only thing and the M2 chip and its integration with the iPad, it doesn't have to work work on a lot of other platforms, whereas the Intel chips that are designed and utilized in the Surface Pro are available for a lot of other types of devices. It's not built specifically for the Surface Pro. The specs are still very impressive on this device. This 12th gen i7 processor is no slouch and it performs really well, not only just in benchmarks, but in real life use. Of course, with the iPad Pro M2, and I previously had the M1 iPad Pro, not a slouch at all. That device handles any application that's installable on the iPad and does it well, whether you're photo editing and editing hundreds of photos and exporting all of those, or even getting in and doing some video editing now that we have DaVinci Resolve available on this device. My main comparison here is gonna be comparing the export of images out of Adobe Lightroom. And so I have a, a catalog of images and a album of images where all the images are downloaded to the device so we don't have to worry about which one is downloading them faster. They're stored locally on both of these devices and I'm going to run an export here as we continue to talk about these devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my export menu set. I'm going to make sure that all of my images are selected. So with 56 images selected on both, I'm gonna go ahead and get my export options ready. I'm going to export to camera roll on the iPad and I'm gonna to export to the desktop on this device. So I have to choose a folder. So we're gonna go ahead and choose and I'm going to create a folder just so that I don't end up with a ton of images. All right, so with 56 images and both of these albums, I'm gonna go ahead and get the selections ready and we are gonna do a race here. The iPad, of course, will be exporting these images to the camera roll and the Surface Pro will be exporting them to a folder on the desktop. And so with select folder and export to camera roll, let's go ahead and select both and we'll see which one is finished first. So battery life on both of these devices are pretty great. The iPad Pro definitely has a much better battery life than the Surface Pro 9. The Surface Pro 9 has a lot more to do being that it's running a full operating system. And a lot of times there are services and things running in the background with Windows that just are not running on an iPad. iPad is fully optimized for what it does. Windows 11 is fully optimized for a lot of different things. And so battery life is not as great. Now in doing this export, we also are running off of battery. There are no plugs running into either of these devices. And on Windows devices, that usually slows things down quite a bit because operations that run intense processing usually run in a slower mode on this device. I have not changed anything from what comes default on this device. And right now, it looks like the Surface Pro is faster. So we'll see though, because it tells me how many images we have done here, seven out of 56, and it doesn't tell me over here uh, even when I mouse over how many images we have left. So we'll see how it finishes out. Now, when it comes to general web browsing, email, all of the basic tasks that you would do on any device, there's some differences. Windows 11 is that experience that you've always had in Windows where you can have multiple applications up, you can have multiple desktops, you can have Windows on top of Windows and all of that good stuff. On the iPad, since the newer versions of iPad OS with Stage Manager and Splits screen apps and all of that stuff, it's a little bit clunkier of an experience to get multiple apps up on the screen at once. While it's easier to sort those applications without using additional software, like the Power Tools software that you can install here, which makes it easy to drag and drop applications into place, organizing applications is still faster on Windows because I can go full screen, I can go left or right. There's very basic and simple organizational structure built into Windows and on the iPad, Stage Manager just is a little bit tricky to use even after a bit of practice. And I've been using Stage Manager since it first came out, not only on the iPad, but on my Mac 
and it still tricks me at times when I'm trying to get applications into place. So I have to say, as far as productivity goes, I feel much more productive on the Surface than I do on the iPad. Now, I can't say that when comparing the Surface to my MacBook Pro. I'm definitely more productive on my MacBook Pro because applications just seem to be faster and snappier. Getting around that user interface is faster for me on a Mac than it is on Windows. And boy, as we are getting close to the end, we can see that the Surface 9 is outperforming the iPad significantly. We are not even halfway done on the iPad and the surface is just about done. And we're on battery power here, which Windows devices typically operate slower. So I'd be surprised if we even saw performance increases on the Surface 9 being plugged in. And the Surface 9 just finished, and the iPad still is not quite halfway through. I'm not even going to finish exporting all those images on the iPad. You can see here the performance differences. Exporting images in Lightroom is processor intense, but also utilizes the graphics capabilities of the devices as well, and very surprising. I have not run a test like this yet on both of these devices. So I'm actually pleasantly surprised and also slightly frustrated because I use the iPad a lot more than I use the Surface. And when it comes to photo editing and rendering out of photos, I definitely be saving a lot of time utilizing the Surface Pro 9. So let's jump back into the main review. As far as performance goes, there are gonna be differences here. Obviously with the photo export, the Surface Pro 9 really outperformed, but there are instances of photo editing that seem to be more snappy with the iPad. When it comes to applying effects and presets, the iPad's definitely much more snappy. In zooming in and out on images and going between different images, the iPad seems faster there. So in the amount of time that you might have lost in waiting for images to export out of your iPad, you may have made up for that time in the faster performance when it comes to actually editing your photos. When it comes to video, I'm not gonna be doing any video editing testing on either of these devices because my video editing process is gonna be really slow on these devices as they sit. Utilizing an iPad for video editing is still gonna be a lot slower than if you're using a Mac. And video editing on the Surface Pro 9 is gonna be a lot slower unless you're using a, an external keyboard, a mouse, and a handful of other things just to make that experience better. Not to mention that this has a 512 gigabyte internal storage, which is just not enough for most of the things that I do. So let's talk about gaming. When it comes to games, Windows hands down has a lot more options available. The iPad has a lot of games, but it's more light gaming that you're gonna be able to experience on this device. My kids like playing games like Fortnite and Minecraft and a handful of other games that are just gonna be a better overall experience on a Windows device or a console as opposed to an iPad. So I can't even really do a comparison there because the games that most of my family would be playing would be in the Windows environment or a console and not necessarily available or the performance wouldn't be as great on something like an iPad. But when it comes to what's most usable on a day-to-day, -day, which of these devices is gonna be the better overall experience? If you are out and about a lot and you need performance and battery life. The iPad is definitely going to be that device for you. The battery life on the iPad is going to be significantly better than what you're going to get on the Surface Pro. Even though the Surface Pro has fantastic battery life, I've been on battery here with both of these devices for a while now. And on the Surface, we're at 72%. On the iPad, we're at 86%. Granted, I've been using the iPad all day and it's on 86% for uh, things like viewing outlines for videos that I filmed before this, and the Surface Pro was at 96% when I started filming this video. So the battery life, while great for a Windows device, is not gonna be as good as what you would get on an iPad. But with heavier lifting, that is gonna tax both batteries on both of these devices. I like the fact that I could just fold up the iPad and go with this keyboard case, as opposed to the Surface, which has both the kickstand and the, the keyboard that I have to worry about. I do like the fact that this device has the kickstand because I can fold that kickstand all the way down and go into a really low profile uh, experience here. If I wanted to use the pen, this is a great experience for me. If I open up the pen here and then open up something like the whiteboard app and just draw, I like having this tablet experience here. This is something that I can't get without a specific case on the iPad. So as I open up whiteboard and am in this drafting style, I have this low profile with a little bit of an angle. It's not laying completely flat on the table. This is a great experience for a tablet with a stylus. 
And of course, the pen that you can get with the keyboard here is a great pairing with this device. So this low profile with the kickstand on the back is something you can't do on an iPad without some form of an external case. That is something that's to be said about this kickstand on the back of the device. Even though it can kind of be a pain and I don't like the fact that it's just metal on whatever surface that it's uh, up against, it gives me that full articulation going down into this nice tablet mode where I can write, I can draw, I could bring this up into any angle and then of course, completely flat on the back of the table as well. And that's great with the Magic Keyboard case, as magical as it is, I have a limited amount of articulation with the screen. So when I open this up, I can go kind of a negative angle, which uh, might be good if you're sitting low or watching some content or something like that. And then of course I can angle this all the way up to this angle, but if I put these devices next to each other and look at the articulation side by side, there's just no comparison. I barely have to make any adjustment here on the surface. The surface can go all the way down here. This is just a massive difference in angle in comparison to what the iPad has to offer. It's going to come down to what you're doing and what you need each of these devices to accomplish for you. Battery life, the iPad wins. Portability, they're equally about the same as far as size and footprint with the iPad being a little bit taller because the screen's a little bit taller. As far as the pen and stylus, we've got the Apple Pencil 2 compared to the stylus that's available with the Surface or the Surface Pen. Both of them are absolutely fantastic. This one, of course, being a little bit more like a pen or a pencil and the Surface Pen kind of having a contractor's pencil feel being that it's kind of squared and flat. If I was going to be doing a lot of writing and marking up of documents and things, the Surface is going to be a much better experience overall, unless you have a specific case that you picked up for your iPad that gave you that full articulation. So my final thoughts on both of these devices comes down to this. It's what ecosystem you're going to be working in that's going to make the most sense. If you have other Windows devices, Windows is going to be the best ecosystem for you because it's easier to work within and connect to those different devices. The iPad definitely works much better if you have an iPhone and a Mac. Otherwise, it's kind of a device that stands and lives alone on its own island. It doesn't connect really well to other devices. The tools and features that are built into iPad OS don't translate that well over to Windows. Some of them do, most of them don't, like AirDrop and stuff like that. Whereas Windows has those types of features that work within other Windows devices. It's largely going to come down to the ecosystem. If this potentially is your only Windows device, in a sea of Apple devices, you might struggle a little bit in enjoying this device because it's just so much different than what you're used to. If you don't have a lot of Apple devices and maybe you're considering leaning towards Apple, but you still have a lot of Windows and maybe even Android devices in your life, I highly recommend the Surface. I think it's a fantastic device and Microsoft has done a good job in building something that can still run Windows, can run full applications like Microsoft Word and all of those applications in their full version that you'd be used to on any other Windows device while giving it all of the features that you would want in a tablet. So those are my thoughts on these devices. I hope that it helped you kind of think through the process of what might be better for you. If it did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel here. I'll also be comparing this device to the Surface Studio Pro laptop. And of course I did my standalone review of the Surface Pro 9 already. So make sure to check that out as well. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos and hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.